Hi friends, this is Charity from Group Publishing. Surprise, we're at my house. Now, you may not have expected to see me here, and I didn't really expect it either, but I am happy to welcome you. So, sit back, relax, and make yourselves at home. Actually, you probably already are at your home. You know, things seem to be changing so fast right now. It's really hard to know what to expect. If I'd have asked you two months ago, this probably isn't the way that you thought or expected to be spending today. But since we're here together, let's discover how Jesus' power is unexpected. We'll get ready to dive into a Bible story about people who expected some certain things from Jesus. But Jesus didn't do what they expected. You see, Jesus doesn't always work in the ways that we expect. Often Jesus' power is unexpected. Before we get started, let's talk about this past week's God sightings. I'm curious, where have you seen evidence of God at work? In your life or in the world around you? Here is my God sighting from this week. I have received so many comments on social media or even emails from families like you who are really enjoying our time. Together. That makes me so happy because I love seeing evidence of God at work in your families. Even though I can't actually see you or talk with you, I know that we are all in this together. So what about you? Talk with your family right now and share some God sightings from the past week. Now, I uh, left my pause sign in the studio, but I made another one that will work for now. Go ahead and pause and talk God sightings. In good times and in bad times, Jesus is always working, even in ways we don't expect. Sometimes that's a happy surprise, like when Jesus leads you to making a new friend. But sometimes Jesus doesn't do the things that we hoped he'd do. Let's talk about this for a moment. With your family, talk about some things that you'd hoped that Jesus would do about the coronavirus. But he didn't, or he hasn't yet. For me, I love baseball. And I hoped that Jesus would help us flatten the curve quickly so that I could see my favorite pitcher throw his curveball on opening day. But that didn't happen. I'm going to have to wait for my favorite sport to start. What about you? What did you hope that Jesus would do about COVID-19, but he didn't? or he hasn't yet. Pause me and talk about those expectations with your family. You know, there are a lot of things that we expected or at least hoped that Jesus would do about coronavirus. Jesus is powerful, but often Jesus' power is unexpected. Let's discover a time in the Bible when Jesus didn't do what people expected he'd do. But before we jump in, let's make sure that we have all of the supplies that you are going to need. So you need your thankful journal. Uh, a Bible would be good. You'll also need some markers or things to write with. And you need a ball. Now I have a baseball, but it can really be any kind of ball or anything that rolls. So a truck or car or something like that will work too. And you need your coat. Uh, don't worry, we're not gonna be heading outside, but you will need your coat for this Bible discovery. So go ahead, 
Pause me while you gather your supplies. So Jesus and his friends were on their way to Jerusalem. Now, other people had heard about Jesus. They'd heard about his miracles and his teaching. And so as Jesus entered Jerusalem, a whole crowd had some pretty high expectations for what Jesus would do for them. If you want to follow along in your Bible, look up Luke 19, verses 28 to 40. Again, that is Luke 19, verses 28 to 40. Now, there were a lot of God's people in Jerusalem at the time, and they were excited to see Jesus coming. Maybe they even cheered like you cheer at a baseball game. Woohoo! Yeah! Home run! Uh, well, maybe not the home run part, but they were excited to see Jesus. The crowd of people even threw their coats on the ground. It was like they were making a red carpet for a really famous person. It was actually something back then that they might do for a king. So here's what you're going to do. You are going to lay your coats down to make a path. Now, maybe you're at your kitchen table. You could lay your coats on the table. If you are in the living room, maybe you lay your coats in a row on the floor. So go ahead and pause me while you put your coats down like a road. Okay, everybody have the path made with coats? Now, people put down their coats and palm branches to make way for Jesus. But Jesus, he didn't walk into town. Nope, he rode a donkey. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about a king or a queen or a hero riding in to save the day, I picture a white horse or something like that. I don't picture a he-haw, donkey. <laughs> but Jesus' power is unexpected. And Jesus, he actually rode a donkey on purpose to fulfill a promise that was made about God's promised rescuer. So, um, I don't know about you, but I don't really, I don't really keep any donkeys here in my house. Um, but I do have this ball. And so we are going to imagine that the ball is Jesus riding a donkey. And we are going to send it down the path of coats. So in order for this to work, let's have one person in your family be the sender. You'll take the ball. So three, two, one. If you're the sender, give me a wave. Hey, senders. All right, so go to one end of the coat sender and get ready, but don't roll it yet. Now, everybody else, you have an important part to play too. You are the crowd that has gathered on either side of the coats and you are cheering and shouting and praising this king who's coming. You can shout words like, Hosanna! That means save us, save us now. Or maybe you could shout, praise him, praising Jesus. Okay, so family members, you're going to get on either side of the coats. Sender, you are at one end. And are we ready? Here comes Jesus, send that down the coats. Awesome. Now this is too much fun for just one sender. So go ahead and pause me and switch up roles. So you're going to have somebody else in the family be the sender this time, while everybody else is the crowd that's cheering and shouting Hosanna for Jesus. Pause me and make sure that everybody in your family gets a turn to be the sender. Go for it. Friends, Jesus, God's only son, rode on a donkey into Jerusalem. 
and people shouted, Hosanna! They were so excited and they had such expectations for Jesus. Now, there were some religious leaders in Jerusalem though. They weren't so excited. They didn't want things to change. They didn't believe that Jesus was sent from God. So all of this commotion, it just made them grumble and scheme. So everybody, go ahead and give your best grumbly face. Some sound effects are good too. <laughs> like you are the religious leaders. You know, Jesus, he could have come into Jerusalem and proclaimed himself king. That's what a lot of people expected him to do. They were tired of being ruled by the Romans and they didn't like that those rulers they didn't treat them very well. But Jesus' power is unexpected and he didn't do what they expected him to. That makes me wonder, why do you think Jesus doesn't always do what we want him to do? For me, you know, there are some things that I'd really like Jesus to do for me. I pray about it, I talk with him about it, but maybe he has other or better things in mind for me. What do you think? Talk about that question with your families. Why do you think Jesus doesn't always do what we expect him to? Friends, Jesus knew that God's people in the Bible needed much more than a great king or queen ruling the land. Jesus' plan goes way beyond a kingdom on earth. He wants everyone to be a part of the heavenly kingdom. So even though Jesus didn't stop the leaders from plotting to kill him, and next week we'll find out that they did, Jesus was still up to something really good and unexpected. Jesus' power is unexpected. When he doesn't do what we want, it may be because he's up to something better, even if it doesn't seem better right now. You're gonna pause me again and talk about another question. I like this one. What are some good things Jesus is doing through this unexpected time we're in right now? Let me ask that again. What are some good things that Jesus is doing even in this unexpected time we're in right now? Talk about that with your family. I keep making the same pause face. I need another one. How about this one? Thank you for sharing. You know, sometimes it's hard to see Jesus' great big plan. But even when we don't understand why something is happening, we can trust that Jesus is still powerful. Sometimes Jesus' power is unexpected. But friends, he is so faithful. He's helped us in the past, and he'll continue to help us right now. We can trust him. You know, Praising Jesus is a great way to remind ourselves of all of the good things that he's done for us. We can praise Jesus in the morning, in the afternoon, at nighttime, anytime. So jump up and sing this song with me right now. I'll turn on my TV. You just keep watching. Let's praise him.
right, friends, since you are already up, let's play a quick game that'll keep us moving. Now, it might be a good idea if you have some furniture or things in your room that you need to kind of clear out of the way. You're all going to need lots of space to be moving in this game. So go ahead and pause me while you get your room ready. Welcome back. Are you ready to get moving? Here's what we'll do. I'm going to give you some instructions and you do what I say. Sounds easy enough, right? I'll tell you what to do and you do it as fast as you can. You're gonna have to listen carefully because my instructions will keep changing. Now, you consider me your coach. I'm here in the dugout and I'm telling you what to do. So I'm gonna take it easy and just give those instructions. But are you ready? Kids, are you ready? <laughs> yeah! Grown-ups, are you ready? Yeah, you are. Okay, here is your first thing to do. Do three jumping jacks. Now touch something red in your house. I've got something right here. <laughs> touch your toes. Reach up into the sky. Now do three jumping jacks again. And spin around in a circle. Touch your toes again. Reach for the sky. Spin two more times. High five everybody in the room. Hurry, do three more jumping jacks. Touch something else that's red in the room. Spin five times. Touch your toes. Reach up, jump on one foot five times. Oh, are you having trouble keeping up? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Everybody take a deep breath and sit down. <laughs> Good job. It was hard to keep up in that game though. Let's talk about that. Pause the video and talk with your family about this question. How did you feel as you tried to keep up with all of the changes in this game? Oops. <laughs> in this game, you never knew what I was going to ask you to do next. It was always unexpected. You know, we don't always know what's coming next in life either. And with the coronavirus right now, it seems like things change every day, even every hour. But friends, Jesus, he knows what's coming next. And we can always trust that he's in control, even when his power is unexpected. In the Bible, God's people expected Jesus to be king on earth, but instead, Jesus died. That didn't seem as good. But then Jesus, he came back to life. And that was so unexpected. We'll talk more about that next time. Jesus' power is sometimes unexpected. Even now, Jesus is helping people in surprising ways. And guess what? We get to join Jesus and share his love and power with others. There are a lot of people doing that right now. Take a moment to think about some people. Now specifically, think about all of the helpers that you notice right now. Maybe you're thinking about a grown-up, a parent maybe, who's helping you. Or maybe you're thinking about doctors and nurses. Or maybe you're thinking about the person that stocks the shelves and works the cash register at the grocery store. These are helpers who are with us. Now, we're gonna take a moment and pray for these helpers. So, with your family, 
um, pause the video and pray asking Jesus to give his power and his strength to the people who are helping right now. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, when the video ends, you can draw a picture of something good or unexpected that Jesus has done during this time. And you can do it in your thankfulness journal. You could even draw a picture or write a little note to a helper that you notice in your world. Be sure to put today's date on the page and keep adding to your journal this week as you see more God sightings. Remember, a God sighting is evidence of God at work. It could be something beautiful that you see or a conversation that you have. Whatever you notice that God is up to in your life. Well, friends, thank you so much for virtually visiting my home. It is so nice to have visitors like you. Now, we'll be back in the studio next week. We were so excited to celebrate Easter with you that we recorded next week, last week. Huh, that's kind of unexpected and a little confusing. I can't wait to see you then.